Okay, welcome back. Bit of an update since uh, a little while ago. I've been working on this Electric 3 for a little while now. Made a video about the dummies guide to this Electric. Uh, I want to say a year and a half, two years ago. Then I had a kid. Then everything kind of went awry. Uh, one of the main issues that I had with it is that the rotate tape was broken. So it needed to be replaced. I'd ordered one, unfortunately. What I ordered is a 13 inch tape and unfortunately this is a 15 inch carriage machine so that was the wrong tape so I have a nice 13 inch tape here so maybe if I end up buying a Selectric one or uh, or a shorter carriage electric at some point I'll be able to use it or I'll sell it to somebody who wants it. Um, in the meantime I pulled it back out, I dusted it off it still works, except I found some new issues with it. I guess over time, um, one of the wires uh, on the switch, you can't see it's back here. Um, I guess the wire is broken right near the switch so it wouldn't turn on. So you kind of have to mess with it a bit. Um, I'll probably end up uh, rebuilding the switch, but for now at least um, it's running. And uh, well, I guess it was running. There you go. And the return is running. Oh, look at that. We don't have a space bar. That's not good. So there's still a few issues with it. Um, what I've been doing is I've actually been using um, some lacquer thinner and the little applicator to basically free up some parts. So that's been working. I bought these little applicators at uh, at a uh, wood shop. Uh, it's usually used to apply uh, plexiglass glue and other things. So I'm using that. That's worked really well to free up some stuff. But since I worked on it last year, it's been really, really nice since. So it's just covered in dust and I really need to clean up a few parts. Um, some of the return and space uh, carriage mechanism still full of oil. I guess oil eventually seeped into it. So I've been kind of flushing it out and it's been working. Uh, the tab um, was never working correctly. So that's been uh, repaired. Um, I found somebody online and I'll put the link down below. Um, I believe he's called Phoenix Typewriter. He's really good with Selectrics and it looks like he's a repair shop uh, somewhere in the States. Um, he's actually uh, taught me a few things. Um, there's more and more Selectric videos on YouTube I'm finding. The reason why I made my video uh, right off the bat was because it was there was nothing else out there at least that I could see. So one thing that I've learned is how to half cycle the Selectric. So, when I received the tape, which by the way I've ordered from a place in Montreal, it should be here any day now if they ever ship it. This time I did order the 15 inch tape, hopefully it comes. Um, what I'll need to do is I'll need to install it. So there's a few things that I learned. Uh, one, you need to half cycle the machine. And a lot of people are gonna say, well what's, what's a half cycle? What does that mean how you do that? Um, is you're basically manually working the mechanism of the typewriter. Um, you're doing it by hand instead of having the motor do it. So if I turn it on and I type a letter, that's a full cycle, which means it's pushing the head forward, it's actually advancing a space and so on and so forth. The only reason why that's happening is because the motor's running and when I press a key, it makes the mechanism advance. So if I didn't have power, there'd be no way to advance it manually other than to rotate a cam, which is right here. Now this cam, you need to rotate using a special tool. There's actually threads in here, and they're left-hand threads. And those threads are used to advance the mechanism manually. You can buy a tool that's called a uh, manual advance um, tool. Um, it's, it's called a cycle crank, I think. Um, you can find them on eBay. Um, here in Canada, I think, with the conversion, they're selling about about $19 plus $15 shipping to my location, which in my opinion is a lot of money for a tool I'm not gonna use all that much. Um, so I've been shopping around. You've been wondering, okay, well, can I possibly buy a screw that's left hand that's gonna fit in here? And if I can get a screwdriver and rotate it, then that should work. Well, unfortunately, I went to a couple of shops and uh, they basically didn't laugh at me, but it doesn't exist. Um, my understanding is that it's a number six uh, screw. Um, it's uh, 36 threads per inch, I believe. 
and um, it's left hand, which it just doesn't exist. You'd have to have a machine shop, uh, throw a piece of metal on the lathe and basically make the threads manually using a lathe. Not feasible at this point. And also you can't buy a die to be able to make your own. So what do you do? Well, I have a 1 8 inch uh, piece of brass here. Uh, as you can see, I actually bent it into shape. You can buy these at Home Depot. They're a couple bucks, actually, they're not a couple bucks. And I bought one to make a radio antenna years ago. And uh, I have pieces left over, so I just cut a piece and I made my own. Um, it doesn't thread fully in, but it goes in. It locks in place, if I can get it to lock in. And you have to, obviously, screw the wrong way. And when it goes in, you can advance the mechanism. So now all I'm doing is I'm manual advancing. As you can see, the head isn't moving. So what you need to do is you need to press any letter. That locks the letter in place. And once I move the mechanism, it advances. So what I need to do to replace the tape is press a letter, advance it halfway to the point where the, the head is just about here, that locks the um, the return um, spool underneath uh, that keeps the actual rotate tape from from turning. So, um, so that's basically how you lock it in place. And once I complete, it goes back to its original place. So, what you need to do is you need to get a tight ball installed on there. Let's get some tight balls out. If I have one that'll fit, I probably don't. Maybe I do. All right. Watch me break this one on camera. Anyways, so you need to get a tight ball on. I have some tight balls for this electric three somewhere else. Um, you rotate the head until it's fully cocked and it says as maximum spring tension. Then you let it go, or then you hold it in place. You find where the T-slot is at the bottom. And I don't know if you can see in the camera, it's kind of hard to tell. And uh, and then you manually crank it. So that's, that's basically all it is. So that gets fairly complicated and it's kind of, kind of hard to do but you don't need to buy a special tool you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars and uh, the only thing you really need at this point is get yourself a uh, get yourself a hand crank make make yourself a hand crank tool um, and then getting it out of there once it's in there you're turning clockwise and you get it out so all you need is something to jam in the hole and it should just work that's it for now. I'm waiting for the replacement tape. When it comes in, I think I'll put it together. I'll wind it and uh, I might actually do a little montage there just to show you how to do it. There's not a lot of info out there how to do this. In fact, I only found it in one place and I want to see if I can do it. Uh, one last thing to mention is that there's multiple ways of doing it. There's an IBM way of doing it. There's a recommended way of doing it. Uh, what I saw being done is that you feed in um, the tape into the T-slot first, go around and around again, and then you attach it to the carriage. So that's a whole different thing that we need to do, and we'll do that once we have the replacement tape. Bye for now. Okay, that was a bit confusing. I'll, uh, I'll show you exactly how to do it really fast. I have my tool. I have the type ball installed. Sorry, I had to rummage through my stuff to find it. And uh, here's the very, very basics of how to actually um, lock that disc at the bottom. Um, it's actually spring-loaded, so it needs to be taut, obviously, because it'll follow the carriage. It also, it's also what's going to let the ball rotate freely, because there's always spring tension. And what the rotate tape does is it basically holds it in a specific place and uses the actual 
um, you know, spring tension to actually work the ball. Um, so what will be done when I receive it? Um, and uh, if you have it, you can try it yourself. Um, so first off, we'll be putting our tool in. So let me put that in. All right, we're rotating. We're good. So next, we're going to rotate our ball all the way to the end, all the way until the bottom's out, and it's counterclockwise. So you're rotating the ball counterclockwise. All right. So ah, well actually, uh, my T-slot is right there, right in front. So that's perfect. Um, actually, you know what? The T-slot should be on the opposite side. So let it go a bit until the T-slot is on the back um, and that the arrow is pointing towards the back of the machine. So you can't see it here, but there's an arrow at the top of the letter and that arrow needs to be pointing back. So once it's there, type a letter, lock that letter, rotate it. Oops. Try it again. I went too far. Might have to do that a few times. Okay. As you can see, it's, it's locked. It's not going anywhere. It's stuck in place. Um, I'm not sure if it matters if it's moved a little bit because now it's actually in, it's, it's I don't know. Now it's actually in the process of a cycle. So I'm not sure if that's important. Once that's done, then you want to feed in your tape from the back. Uh, from what I've seen is that you work from the back forward. Um, there's also a little plastic retaining um, attached to the spring. Uh, there's a little plastic lever that you can undo. There's a flathead screw and that comes out. Um, and that roller here should also come out because it gets in the way. Um, I'll go through every single um, I'll go through the entire process once I have the tape because for now it's kind of hard to do that without having the actual part. But once I have the part, the, the trick is to feed it in to the spool first, get the T-slot to click in there, get your tape out to this pulley, and then get your tape back over to the, um, the, the pulley that's actually freely moving up and down here on this side. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera. Uh, this little pulley here and from there you can go ahead and reattach it to the carriage. The carriage has a screw that holds um, the both tapes so if you follow it um, right back here there's a little screw that holds the um, both tapes in um, so you just need to find that reattach it uh, again it's kind of hard to tell here because I'm, I'm working on camera and it, you really need to work at it from the bat but you can definitely uh, follow the other tape where it attaches to the carriage is where that other tape attaches as well. They both attach to the same location. So once I have it, I'll have a video coming up as well on how to do that. But for now, this is how you lock the head. This is how you rotate it. Have fun.